Hi, and welcome to another JavaScript Mastery video. In this video, you will learn what Git is and how to use it to manage your code in a more organized way. We are going to go over basics of Git and explain the most important commands along the way. Git is the most popular version control system out there, and for good reason. In this video, we'll go over the basics of what Git is and how to use it within the command line. We will look at and work with all the basic and most important Git commands such as add, commit, push and more. This tutorial is very beginner friendly. So what is Git? Git is essential version control technology for web developers and programmers. A version control system allows you to track the history of a collection of files. It supports creating different versions of this collection. Each version captures a snapshot of the files at a certain point in time and allows you to switch between these versions. These versions are stored in a specific place, typically called a repository. Git is currently the most popular implementation of a version control system. So what do we need to get started? If you have a GitHub account and have installed and configured Git on your computer, just skip ahead. But if you don't have a GitHub account, I'll just leave all the links down below so you can just create it, just a normal sign up process. And then you need to install and configure Git. I will also leave the link down below so you can just do it easily. When you're done with that, feel free to continue with this video. Okay, now that everything is installed, we can finally start typing code. Uh, we can start writing commands and first we can check whether we have installed Git successfully. We can do that by typing Git dash dash version. And if we successfully get a version of our current Git implementation, we can see that it is installed correctly. So now that you have installed it, let's move on to creating our first repository. So create a folder, uh, you can name it whatever, you can do something like the demo Git repository. I have already created the folder called Git tutorial and I currently have it open in Visual Studio Code. If you don't have a Visual Studio Code, you may have some other uh, text editor, but Visual Studio Code offers built-in uh, terminals, so we can use that terminal with more ease. Okay, now that our project is open in our text editor and we have the console open, we can just go ahead and type git init. This will be our first command. With this, we just initialized an empty Git repository. Now our folder is initialized as a Git repository and we can do all the Git stuff in it. Okay, uh, now let's add some files to our local repository. Let's say we add a index.html and we can also throw style.css. Okay we can create a normal HTML5 boilerplate. Now we need to tell Git to track these files. So we do that, but by typing the command git add. And now git add can take many parameters. One of these is just a single file. So if we want to type index.html, we will tell uh, git to track just index.html. It will stage it and it will track all the changes in this file. But we already have two files, so we need to add style.css. You can see that we can type just one file by one file and continue adding all the files. But on the projects where you have 50 or more files, it can be really time consuming. So what we can do is type git add and then dot. Dot will add or stage all the files to our git. So git add dot, enter. As you can see, now all the files have been staged and Git is successfully tracking them. So as you can see, uh, Git add one file one by one is really uncommon. Most of the times you simply want to track all of the files you create and you're not, you're not going to want to add each one separately. Uh, okay, now the next step in Git is to commit or save the changes. 
After we add these files to the staging area, then we need to create a checkpoint called commit. Commit in a Git repository records a snapshot of all the files in your directory, or all, all the added files. It's like a giant copy and paste, but even better. So to add files to the commit, we can use the following command. Git commit and then dash m, meaning that we will provide a message about that commit. It is necessary for every single commit to have a commit message. So we can just uh, provide a message with quote signs and enter our message. Since this is our first commit, we can call it initial commit. And press enter. There is a widely used practice for writing commit messages and we need to write them in imperative. For example, naturally, people would write commit messages in past tense because they have added something. So let's say people would say git commit dash m and then added navbar. So they have added navbar. But we need to write messages, commit messages for people who are going to merge our branch. So that way, a person who is, who is going to merge your branch, more on that later, will know exactly what will that commit do when merge. It will add navbar, it won't add navbar. So we can change this to add navbar. Okay, we can delete this since we already committed our changes. All of these changes are added to our local repository, but now we need to push it to our remote repository. This is where GitHub comes in. A remote in Git is a common repository that all team members can use to exchange their changes. In most cases, such a remote repository is stored on a code hosting service like GitHub or an internal server. Now you can go onto GitHub and create a new repository. Enter a repository name and click create repository. As you can see here, you can go onto the GitHub, you can click this a plus icon here and click new repository. Afterwards, you can add a repository name. So let's say git tutorial, and then you can click create repository. You will now be greeted with a series of commands you need to do to push this code correctly to our remote repository. As you can see, we already did most of these steps. Uh, git init, we already initialized our git repository. Uh, we already committed changes and now we need to add stuff or to our remote repository. First, we need to add the new, newly created repository as our remote repository. We can do that by copying this command. So it will be git remote add origin and then the link of our uh, remote repository. As you can see here, GitHub already provides you with that. So you can just go ahead and copy and paste it. Okay, we click enter and now we need to push our changes to our master branch. When all the files are added and committed, the only thing left to do is to push them to our remote repository. For the first time you're pushing files to a remote repository, you need to enter the following command. git push dash u origin master. And every other time you'll just need to type git push. But for beginning, we can just copy this command paste it right in and click enter. Okay, now as you can see, total of four changes and everything is correctly and successfully set to our branch master in our remote repository. We can clear the console and head on to our GitHub, refresh the page. And as you can see, our files are now successfully stored in our GitHub repository. Now you can play with these files for a bit and see if you understood Git workflow correctly. Uh, we can do something like add a change here. So let's say we added a navbar. So it'll be nav and then, for example, we'll just type navbar here, it doesn't really matter. Okay, as you can see, we have one change. We can do git add and then git commit and the message will be add navbar as we already mentioned and for the last step git push easy as that you don't have to keep your code locally anymore you can store versions changes and stuff like that so let's move on to our github and refresh and as you can see uh, we have made a change to our index.html 23 seconds ago and it was add navbar so we can click that 
And in here, as you can see, we have a green line that indicates a change in our file. You can also get back to code and click commits. And in here, you can see all the commits or all the changes that you have created. So uh, there was a change one minute ago and it was add navbar. And in here, you can see exactly what happened in that, in that certain commit. Now we can move on to some more complex topics like branches. They are simply pointers to a specific commit, nothing more. So if we head back to GitHub, in here you can see that we have some commits. Branches will simply be a pointers to specific commits, as you can see here. We will explain that as we add one branch. So we can head back to our Visual Studio code and if we type git branch, this is a command that will show us all the branches we currently have. So we currently have just the branch master. And then we can create a new branch with the following command, git branch, and then the branch name. So let's say uh, we want to add uh, footer and let's call that branch footer. So all the changes, all the commits regarding the footer will be stored in this branch. So git branch footer, and now the branch is uh, created, but we then need to switch to that existing branch. So as you can see here on the bottom left, we are still in the branch master and now we need to switch. We do that by typing the command git checkout and then name of the branch. So git checkout footer. As you can see here, now we changed our branch. There is also a shortcut for immediately creating a new branch and then switching to it. The command is git checkout dash b and then name of the branch. So let's say if we wanted to add something else, uh, branch doesn't matter. And then this will immediately call git branch and then git checkout. So we do not have to add two commands just for this one. So now let's add some changes to that branch and then we will merge it to our master. Okay, so we will add a footer. So let's add a div that will simply have a footer inside. Now we can see that we have changes again. And as we already learned, you can just type git add, git commit, and then add footer, and then git push. Eh, but first time you are setting the branch, you need to type this command. You cannot just type git push as you saw before, but you need to set the upstream to origin footer. So we will just copy this and paste it. And as with master branch, the next time you push to, to the footer branch, you'll just need to type git push. But for now, git guided us to set the upstream of the footer branch. Now that is clear we can check our changes in our GitHub file. We have two branches. As you can see here, we can swap between the branches and we are currently on master. Now we do not expect to have a footer built in in the master branch because we didn't add it nor merge it. So if you check this file, you can see that there is no footer. But if we head back to branch and change into footer and click on the index.html, you can see that footer is here. The same things go for the files in Visual Studio Code. Footer is here and there is a single quick tip. You can change the branch branches quickly with going to the bottom left and then choosing a branch. So we can move on to the master branch. And as you can see, the footer goes away. We go back to the uh, footer branch and the footer is here. But now how do we merge it? How do we push the changes to the master branch? Uh, we can do that easily with merging. So now let's say we've done some changes. We are completely done with this branch and we are completely done with the footer. Now we just need to merge the changes and push it to the master branch. We can do that by going into the master branch. So bottom left corner and swapping to master and we will just merge that branch with one simple command. So it is git merge and then name of the branch we want to merge. So git merge footer. And this command will quickly merge our uh, branch into the master branch. And now we have the footer in here. And after that, just to be able to see your files in your GitHub, you'll need to run the command git pull and it will tell you if you're up to date or it needs to pull some stuff that you've just merged in. So now we can head back to the GitHub and check the code. Our index.html now should have the footer as it does here. 
So now let's list all the commands that we used in our git routine. So we can create a new file, for example, git.txt, all simple text document, and in here we'll just type our commands. So first we need to initialize a repository and we do that but by git init. Secondly, we need to add all the files. So if we change something, we need to add uh, and tell git to track these files. We do that by typing git add and then dot. After we added all the files, we need to save it in a single commit. So a single snapshot at one time of the files we've changed. And we do that by typing git commit dash m and then uh, message of the commit. So whatever suits uh, that commit the best. Afterwards, we just push it to our remote repository by typing git push. We've also talked about branches. So we can uh, use the command git branch uh, to, sh to show all the branches. We can create a branch with typing git branch and then uh, name of the branch. So branch name. We can also switch to the other branch by typing git checkout and then name of the branch. And we can also fuse these two commands into one by typing git uh, checkout dash b uh, for branch and then branch name. We've also talked about pulling the code. So when we push something and we want to pull it into another branch, we just use git pull for that. Those are the most important and simplest commands you need to use the git properly. There is much more of git to learn. Uh, if you'd like another video, just let me know. But for now, this is all you really need to know to start working with git, to start working with teams. Uh, because if you don't know this uh, main simple and easy commands, you just cannot get into the workflow. So you need, you need to know how to initialize a repository, add the files and how to track them. You learned all of that in this video. So thank you again for watching and see you in the next video. Thank you.